But um, the other baby I got to say we went out to dinner. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Faith and Healing School. Another glorious day in the Lord. Be ready in season and out. And you never know what season we're getting. These days, it's almost July and you've got a flannel shirt on. That's all right. We need the rain. The rain brings a harvest. Amen. Thank you, Father. For the privilege, the honor, and the freedom to stand here and tell people all about your love. Amen. Lord, I come to you today and I ask you to guide my words here today. Holy Ghost, have your way. Speak the words that you want spoken. Lord, I ask you that your words go on fertile ground that they produce in the lives of the people that hear them. I thank you for all the blessings on our lives, Lord. I thank you for having your way here today and blessing everybody that hears it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now I'm going to start with a confession of faith. If you haven't made Jesus your Lord and Savior, then this is a good time. Pay attention right now. It's a simple thing to do. It's not complicated. God doesn't make it so we have to jump through hoops and do all kinds of things mm -hmm. to be close to Him. Jesus did all the work already. He paid all the prices. He paid all the penalties. He did all the suffering. He took all the sickness and the lack and disease. He did the hard part. All God asks for now is our hearts. You may be thinking, you don't know what I did. God could never love me. He loves you just the way you are. Jesus loved you before you were born. Amen. They knew all the things you were going to do. Mm -hmm. And he paid the price for them all. All he asks mm -hmm. is that we ask him to forgive us. So that's what we do. That's how I like to start the class. Just coming to the Lord and asking for forgiveness for anything that displeased Him. Thank you, Father, that you forgive me. It's a brand new day. There is no history of any of the things I did. In your eyes, I'm just righteous and I can come to you boldly and just declare that I believe Jesus is your son that he came down to earth he lived here as a man God he was crucified he willingly sacrificed himself for me He died. And in three days you raised him back up to life. And you sat him on the heavenly throne next to you. And I make that declaration as Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. Amen. I reaffirm that today and every day. If you're praying that for the first time, let us know. Send us an email or give us a call. You can find everything at AbundantGraceChurch.com. You get in contact with us. We'd like to talk to you some more. Because that opens the door for all the blessings and all the promises that God has for us. What Jesus did allows us to come boldly to the throne of grace and pray right to the Heavenly Father. Right to God. And that's what we're going to do now. We're going to pray for this class. We're going to pray for wisdom and insight and learning. These prayers wouldn't be in God's word if he didn't expect us to use them. 
And if he wasn't going to, answer them. So we can pray these with confidence now. Ephesians chapter 1. I pray to you, the glorious Father, the God of my Lord Jesus Christ, that you would give me a spirit of wisdom and revelation as I come to know you better. Then I will have deeper insight. I will know the confidence that you want me to have and the glorious wealth that your people will inherit. I will also know the unlimited greatness of your power as it works with might and strength for me, a believer. You worked with that same power in Christ when you brought him back to life and gave him the honor position, the one next to you, the Father on the heavenly throne. Jesus is far above all rulers, authorities, powers, lords, and all the names that can be named, not only in this present world, but also in the world to come. You have put everything under the control of him. You have made him the head of everything for the good of the church. The church is his body and completes him as he fills everything in every way. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. I'm asking you, God, to give me a gift from the wealth of your glory. I pray that you would give me your inner strength and power through your spirit, that Christ will live in me through faith. I also pray that love may be the ground into which I sink my roots and on which I have my foundation. This way, with all God's people, I'll be able to understand how wide, long, high, and deep your love is. I will know Christ's love, which goes far beyond any knowledge. I am praying this that I will be completely filled with you, Father God. Glory belongs to you. Whose power is at work with, with me? By your power, you can do infinitely more than I could ever ask or imagine. And glory belongs to you in the church and in Christ Jesus for all time and eternity. Amen. And then we go to Colossians chapter 1. For this reason, I have not stopped praying about this. I ask you, God, to fill me with the knowledge of your will through every kind of spiritual wisdom and insight. I ask this so I will live the kind of life that proves I belong to you, Lord. Then I will want to please you in every way as I grow in producing every kind of good work by this knowledge about you. I ask you to strengthen me through your glorious might with all the power that I need to patiently endure everything with joy. I also thank you, Father, for you have made me able to share the light, which is what you want me to inherit. You, Father God, have rescued me from the power of darkness. And you brought me into the kingdom of your Son, whom you love. Hallelujah. You know when that happens? When you get rescued? When you would confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You've been rescued from the power of darkness. It has no power over you any longer. You're in the kingdom of the Son. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about the importance of joy today. There's so much power in it. Joy is not just an emotion, it's a powerful force. If you need healing in your body, you need joy. It counteracts the misery, it counteracts the pain, it counteracts depression. This morning's devotion was called the recipe for joy. Biblical joy comes from the Lord. It's a spiritual gladness of the heart that comes from knowing, experiencing, trusting Jesus. One scholar said joy, in other words, is the response and the reaction of the soul to a knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's how your soul responds to knowing Jesus having the love of God poured into your heart. Mm. It's how your body responds from your soul, from your inside, your mind, your will, your emotions. Joy is a powerful force that can sustain you through tough times. The joy of the Lord shields our hearts. The joy of the Lord gives us inner strength and power. In Nehemiah chapter 8, we see God's recipe for joy. This is chapter 8, verses 3, 6, 8, 10, and 12. Then he read from it in the open square that was in front of the water gate from morning until midday before the men and women who could understand and the ears of all the people who were attentive to the book of the law. And Ezra blessed the Lord 
the great God. Then all the people answered, Amen, Amen, while lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to the ground. So they distinctly, so they read distinctly from the book in the law of God. And they gave the sense and helped them to understand the reading. Then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portion to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hallelujah. And all the people went their way to eat and drink, to send portions and rejoice greatly, because they understood the words that were declared to them. That's the recipe right there. The recipe for joy. First, you must put in the Word of God. You must read it for yourself and sit under good teachers, just like they did. They listened to the, the Word of God all morning. They had teachers there explaining them, helping them understand the Word. Second, into the mixing bowl of your life, you must add reverence for the Lord and worship. That's what they did. Right there. They blessed the Lord. And the people answered, Amen, Amen, lifting up their hands. And they bowed their heads in reverence. And they worshiped God. And the third ingredient is the sharing of the love of God in many forms with those in need. So they went rejoicing, eating, drinking, and sending portions for those who had nothing prepared. They shared God's love. And I'm sure if they're sending portions, that means the people weren't there to hear the word. So when they went and they brought them the food and the drink, they also told them about the great things they heard about God. The joy of the Lord is your strength. Amen. And so the people went rejoicing. After they had filled up on the love of God, on the word of God, on being taught, just like we prayed for just a moment ago. We prayed for his knowledge, his wisdom, his guidance, spiritual revelation. When you put all these things into your life on a daily basis, you will continually experience the joy of the Lord and all of its benefits. Psalm 1611 says, You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. And at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Amen. In his presence is fullness of joy. That means there's not room for anything else. There's not room for sickness. There's not room for depression. There's not room for pain. If you're full of joy, you're full. Full is full. And at his right hand are pleasures forevermore. People are so afraid living a Christian life is going to be boring. It's not. You don't have to sacrifice fun to live a godly life. You're going to be full of joy. You're not going to have to suffer. You've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, the power of darkness. And in God's presence, there are pleasures forevermore. Joy, everlasting, full of glory. If you hear a funny joke or watch a funny movie, you feel happy for a time. But that feeling soon fades. It's not joy. When we're talking about the joy of the Lord and biblical rejoicing, we are talking about, we're, we're not talking about a frivolous emotion. We're not talk, we are talking about a powerful force that will empower you from the inside and in the case of rejoicing will have a profound effect on those around you. Think about times. Maybe you weren't feeling so up. Maybe you were going through some stuff and you went to 
a church service and the worship was powerful. People were moving. People were rejoicing. You see all that around you. And soon, that depression, that anxiety, whatever's bothering you, starts to fade. They're rejoicing. Their outward sign of praising the Lord for whatever they're experiencing in their lives, a good thing. God's coming through for them, answering their prayers. That's rubbing off on you. It's filling you up. That joy, the joy of the Lord, their strength is becoming your strength through Christ. That's why there's so much talk about rejoicing in the Word and the joy of the Lord in the Word because it's so powerful. That's why the devil, he doesn't want you happy. He doesn't want you rejoicing. He wants you consumed with distractions. He doesn't want you to take the time to sit down and thank God. He doesn't want you starting the day saying, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You can say it every day because every day the Lord, the Lord has made. Amen. There isn't any day that somebody else made. God made them all. Mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. Be happy in your faith and rejoice. Be glad-hearted continually, always. Be unceasing in prayer. Praying perseveringly. And thanking God in everything, no matter what the circumstances may be. Be thankful and give thanks. For this is the will of God for you, who are in Christ Jesus, the revealer and the mediator of that will. Thank God in everything, no matter what the circumstances. It's the will of God for who is in Christ Jesus. If you made Jesus your Lord and Savior, you are in Christ Jesus. Amen. And you can thank God in every circumstance because He already told you you're going to win. You're going to be a victor. You are going to triumph through Jesus. Romans chapter 12, verses 11 and 12. Never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor. Be aglow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoice and exult in hope. Be steadfast and patient in suffering and tribulation. Be constant in prayer. We're going to have troubles here. But when we've been delivered from the power of darkness, we've been delivered from darkness's end result. Troubles are going to come Weapons are going to be forged against us, but they won't prosper. Things are going to come, but they have to go in Jesus' name. Amen. Stay positive. Build your faith. Keep rejoicing. Let the joy of the Lord stay inside you. That joy allows that peace that, get, that Jesus gave us to operate in our lives. Philippians 4, 4 through 7. Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight. Gladden yourselves in Him. So you don't always, can't always depend on somebody else to, to, around to cheer you up. A lot of times we're by ourselves. You have to gladden yourself. Focus on God and the good things He does. It's important. Rejoicing. Filling yourself with the joy of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord always. Delight. Gladden yourselves in Him. Again, I say, rejoice. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your considerateness, your forbearing spirit. So we we're talking about rejoicing brings other people up. Did you ever go someplace and you were feeling pretty good? So you start listening to somebody else mm. and all the misery <laughs> that they're going through and it made you depressed mm. and you're not even going through anything. The opposite is true. The rejoicing. I've been around people who are always so positive and 
filled that when I'm going through something, just going there, just talking to them to build you up, that joy rubs off. Let all men know and perceive and recognize your unselfishness, your considerateness, your forbearing spirit. The Lord is near. He is coming soon. Do not fret or have any anxiety about anything, but in every circumstance and in everything, by prayer and petition, definite requests, with thanksgiving, continue to make your wants known to God. And God's peace shall be yours. The peace. You start with rejoicing, and you'll have the peace, that tranquil state of a soul, assured of its salvation through Christ. Amen. And so, fearing nothing from God and being content with its earthly lot, whatever sort that is, that peace which transcends all understanding shall garrison, garrison and mount guard over our hearts, minds, in Christ Jesus. That's what I talked about in the beginning. The joy of the Lord guards our hearts. It shields our hearts. Yes. It all starts with a soul assured of salvation, making Jesus your Lord and Savior. Now you know where you're going at the end, no matter what happens. Fearing nothing from God because you asked for forgiveness. He said, I forgave everything. There's no punishment coming. You could be content with whatever, whatever is going on around you. Not upset, fretful, anxious. Rejoice in the Lord. Those are powerful verses there. Habakkuk, chapter 3, verses 17 through 19. This goes right along with that, no matter what's going on in your earthly lot, through all circumstances. It says, Though the fig trees do not blossom, and there is no fruit on the vines, though the product of the oil olive fails, and the fields have no food, though the flock is cut off from the fold, and there are no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will exalt in the victorious God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength, my personal bravery, and my invincible army. He makes my feet like hind's feet and will make me to walk, not to stand still in terror, but to walk and make spiritual progress upon high places of trouble, suffering, or responsibility. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Doesn't matter what's going on. Yet I will rejoice. I will exult in the victorious God of my salvation. Amen. Listen to those words. Read that stuff for yourself. Don't just read it. Be happy in your faith. No. Declare these things. <laughs> Though the fig tree does not blossom, Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. Rejoicing stirs up your faith and shows your faith to God and others around you despite the circumstances and challenges. Yeah. Isaiah chapter 60 verses 1 and 2. Arise from the depression and prostration in which circumstances have kept you. Rise to a new life. Shine, be radiant with the glory of the Lord. For your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, the dense darkness of all peoples, but the Lord shall rise upon you, and his glory shall be seen on you. Delight. You've been delivered from the power of darkness, delivered from the kingdom of darkness. The light of God has shined upon you. Rejoice. Isaiah 61, 10 and 11. I will, re greatly, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul will exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as surely as the earth brings forth its shoots and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring forth, so surely the Lord God will cause rightness and justice and praise to spring forth before all the nations through the self-fulfilling power of his word. Hallelujah. 
You have to stir up gladness in yourself. You have to rejoice. You have to stand fighting. It's part of the battle to continue to rejoice. The devil's looking who wandering around seeing who can he can devour. Mm. Who stops rejoicing? That's what he's looking for. Somebody who's sitting there with their mouth shut. Mm. Somebody who's just wallowing in self-pity. Mm. Just thinking about their circumstances. When you're not actively rejoicing in the Lord, the devil sees an opportunity to come in. Pile more depression in there. More doubt. Stir up anxiety. If you're rejoicing, when was the last time you sat in a worship service praising the Lord and you had anxiety? Mm. It can't exist at the same time as rejoicing in the Lord. You can't be singing how great is our God and be in fear. Mm -hmm. Be strong. Be courageous. Because I am with you, God says. Mm -hmm. When you're praising Him, that's His presence is there. He inhabits His praises. If God's there, there can be no fear. First Peter chapter 1 verses 8 and 9. Without having seen him, you love him. Though you don't even see him now, you believe in him and exult and thrill with inexpressible and glorious, triumphant, heavenly joy. At the same time, you receive the result, the outcome, the consummation of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Believing in Him. You can thrill. You can be thrilled with inexpressible and glorious, triumphant, heavenly joy. It's powerful. John 16, 24. Up to this time you have not asked a single thing in my name as presenting all that I am. But now ask and keep on asking and you will receive so that your joy, the gladness and delight may be full and complete. You can have full and complete joy. Jesus says so. Whatever you need, you ask for it. When you ask for one thing, he says, keep on asking. Whatever you want, whatever you need, ask in his name. He wants your joy to be full. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And Jesus came to have life abundantly to the full till it overflows. John 15, 11 says, I have told you these things, that my joy and delight may be in you. And that your joy and gladness may be full, be a full measure and complete and overflowing. That's Jesus talking to you. Proverbs 15, 23 says, A man has joy by the word of his mouth, a word spoken in due season. How good it is. Mm. You got to speak things out. Jesus didn't say those things you think about in my name. He says the things you ask in my name. Ask. That's speaking. You'll have joy by the word of your mouth.
Proverbs 17, 22 says, A happy heart is a good medicine, and a joyful mind causes healing. But a broken spirit dries up the bones. We just talked about that. The devil looks about for people who don't operate in the joy of the Lord. Who allow their hearts to be sad. That's why his word says to gladden ourselves. Mm. A happy heart is good medicine. A joyful mind. Joy-filled mind causes, causes healing. Romans 15, 13. May the God of your hope so fill you with joy, all joy and peace in believing. That's why salvation, declaring Jesus as Lord and Savior, is so important. It's the vital key to everything. You're not going to have joy and peace. Why? Because it comes in believing. If you're not a believer, you can't have it. You can have worldly peace, which comes and goes. It's not the peace unexpressible that transcends understanding. It's temporary. It's fleeting. May the God of your hope so fill you with all joy and peace in believing through the experience of your faith that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound and be overflowing, bubbling over with hope. Mm. That's powerful stuff. The joy of the Lord is my strength. It's time to rejoice. Psalm 118 verse 24 says, This is the day which the Lord has brought about. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Resist the devil and he'll flee when he comes at you in the morning with that ache, that pain, that long list of things you got to do. Come back at him with the word. It is written, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and I'll be glad in it no matter what I have to do. Experience the incredible power and benefits of the joy of the Lord. Let it flow out of you in waves of worship. To our great and glorious God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hmm. That's the word of the Lord. I don't know how many scriptures that was. It was a lot. It's all God's word. Mm -hmm. It's all rock solid. Amen. Everlasting. The self-fulfilling power of his word was one scripture in there. That's his word going forth. Speak it out. Let that joy rise up inside of you. Everybody's got things they're going through, challenges that they're facing, tasks that they got to do that they don't want to. Mm. We got to get through. There's things we have to do here on this earth. Some people who don't know they're going to heaven after, they spend all their time just trying to have fun here because they don't know what they got after. Mm. You focus on the kingdom, on bringing more people into the kingdom, on doing kingdom things. It's not always fun. I look at it, this is, this is a job. This time here on earth. This is a job we've been tasked with. To get the souls back to heaven. Sometimes at work you have a fun day. Sometimes they have casual Friday or whatever you're going to do. Work picnics and things like that. So sometimes during work you have fun. And then you retire. And then you got time just for pleasure after that. Mm. When we retire from this life. We go to eternity mm. on streets of gold. Hallelujah. Never hungry, never sick, never tired. Hallelujah. Mm. Permanent vacation. Mm. 
Bless, bless, bless. Yes. You want to have more fun at work while we're here? Fill yourself with the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Allow that peace mm -hmm. to permeate your life. But seek, aim at, and strive after, first of all, his kingdom, his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. Mm -hmm. Then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. He who did not withhold or even spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? And God says, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void without producing any effect or useless, Thank but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose it, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Amen. The Lord says to me, you have seen well, for I am alert and active, watching over my word to perform it. Hallelujah. Some days I cry out to the Most High God who performs on my behalf, and He rewards me, who brings to pass His purposes for me, and surely completes them. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Thank you. If it's not perfect, God's not done. And I am convinced and sure of this very thing, that He, God, who began a good work in me, will continue until the day of Jesus Christ, right up to the time of His return, Amen. developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in me. Hallelujah. And in you too. God's got great things. Mm -hmm. We're doing work of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Comes with great benefits. Seek the kingdom first. His way of doing it. Being right. And all these things will be given to you. Things. Tangible things he's going to make sure you have. Just like when you work, you get a paycheck. They don't expect people to come to work and not get paid. They have to go someplace else for their provision. You can't just keep going to work every day. You won't have any gas. Your car will break down. You won't have food. They're not paying you. God says seek the kingdom first. Reach out to people. Share their love. Follow that recipe for joy. Put in some word. And share God's love in the word with people. This lifetime is brief compared to all eternity. Prepare. Prepare for eternity. God's setting up your eternal reward based on your life here. That's where the work comes in. Mm. Getting through the door is as simple as giving God your heart. What you experience for all eternity is based on how much effort you're going to put in down here and getting other people to go with you. Just share the love of God. It's a wonderful thing. Everybody should have it. The joy of the Lord. That's your strength. It's powerful. Put it to work in your life. You'll receive that healing. It's healing for you. Joy, peace. Thank you, Father, for your word. Thank you that you, your word was spoken here. What you wanted spoken Amen. to the people who needed to hear it. Mm -hmm. Lord, I ask you mm -hmm. to stir up inside of them a willingness to put it to work in their lives. I ask you to wrap your loving arms around each and every one of them, Lord. 
Let them feel your love and your presence in their lives. Let them experience and put to work that joy. The joy of the Lord. Mm. Give them new strength each and every morning. Yes. And peace, peaceful sleep at night. Thank you all for all this. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful weekend. See you all Sunday, 10 o'clock at church.